welcome to the first Seek Out the Arts of 2023. Hello everyone, Jennifer L. Scott here and welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. In this month's Seek Out the Arts, we have a decidedly winter and New Year's theme. I'm sharing a beautiful and renewing piece for you to listen to. We are studying a quintessentially wintry, drizzly painting that encapsulates Paris perfectly. I'm going to be reading some winter poetry to you and much more. Seek Out the Arts is brought to us by channel memberships here on The Daily Connoisseur, which is called The Chic Society. We have so much fun in The Chic Society. I do one vodcast every Friday. We go live together once a month or we do a Zoom call where we get to see each other. We also have a pen pal program where I have Chic Society members writing to each other from all around the world. It's pretty amazing. The names that you're seeing here are some of the upper tiers, which I greatly appreciate. And at the end of the video, I'm going to be mentioning the elegant connoisseurs to you, and they are high patrons of the channel. Starting off with a musical selection, I'm sharing a piece from one of my favorite cellists, Sheku Kane Mason. He is performing a Welsh piece called Ma Van Wa, and he's performing this on top of rolling hills. I chose this piece because many of you mentioned that you were seeking peace and rest this year after a chaotic and stressful few years, and I feel that. <laughs> so that's why I derive so much solace and calm from this performance. It's really transformative. Ma Van Wa, and I had to look up how to pronounce it because it's a Welsh word and very confusing, was a popular Welsh song composed by Joseph Perry and first published in 1875. And and Sheku is playing this piece, which was arranged for solo cello. So I'm telling you, you're gonna have this on repeat all month. It's absolutely beautiful. And now we are moving on to the art portion of the video, and I'm so excited to discuss this painting in great depth. It is Gustav Kaibot's Paris Street Rainy Day. It was created in 1877. I feel that this painting really encapsulates a drizzly winter, the darkness of winter, but there's so much to it. But before we jump into it, let's talk briefly about Gustav Kaibot. So Gustav Kaibot was a French Impressionist painter, although his style, as you will see, was not like the typical Impressionists. He was born on the 19th of August in 1848 in Paris, and he died on the 21st of February in 1894 at the age of 45. He died quite young. Now, Gustav Kaibot was not only a very talented painter in his own right, but he was known as a major supporter of the arts. And at the time of his death, he bequeathed a vast collection of 68 paintings to the French government. This included paintings by Pissarro, Monet, Renoir, Sicily, Degas, Cézanne, and Manet. Can you imagine? He had 68 paintings by those masters. It's truly unbelievable. But he did die at the age of 45, and he died of a stroke. He suffered a pulmonary congestion while working in his garden. He loved to garden at the Petit Jean Vier at the age of 45, and he is buried at the Père Lachaise Cemetery in Paris. Now, Gustave Kaibot was independently wealthy, so he never had to rely on his uh, the sale of his paintings in order to live, which is an interesting dynamic. That's not typically the case with many of these painters. But anyway, Paris Street Rainy Day is probably his most famous painting. So let's jump into that right now. Okay, so where is this scene? Obviously we're in Paris. This is what's known as the Place de Dublin, which was then known as the Carrefour de Moscow. It's an intersection to the east of the Gare Saint-Lazare in North Paris. So I want you to look at this picture here. This was taken in 2000. 2011. This is the same intersection. Isn't that amazing? It is housed at the Art Institute of Chicago, and the curator there, who is Gloria Groom, described the work as the great picture of urban life in the late 19th century. So Kaibot is painting his Paris, the wide boulevards. We see the apartment buildings that line the boulevards and the people who live there. And at the forefront of this painting is this stylish upper middle class, presumably, Parisian couple. Now, why do we presume that this couple is middle to upper middle class? It's by what they're wearing. These are our only clues. They have stylish and tasteful sense of dress and they have adornments. And I always like to start with what they're wearing. So let's have a look at that. The man here has a top coat, a frock coat, a top hat and a bow tie. 
His white shirt is starched. He has a buttoned waistcoat and an open long coat with a collar turned up. The lady has a hat on and a delicate half veil over her face. She's wearing diamond earrings, which is a, an indication of class, and those are glinting really brightly in this otherwise kind of dull, drab atmosphere. She's wearing a fur-lined coat over what looks like to be a blue dress with a white collar. Now this is interesting. I'm always talking about why what we wear is important, and it's because you can derive so much about people from what they wear, and we're doing that here with them. We know nothing about this couple except their choice in fashion, and that choice gives us clues to their status in life. Now, you don't just see one class of people in this painting, you also see working class people as well. So if you zoom in behind the lady in the forefront, you can see what appears to be a maid, or a working class woman, because she has a white apron. You can also see a painter or a decorator in a white paint suit carrying a ladder when you zoom in closely behind the man. Everyone else appears to be dressed, you know, for business or casual back in that day, day wear. Let's talk about the colors and the light in this painting because I feel that Gustav Kaibot really just nails it. He gets it. I've spent a lot of time in Paris, as you know, and most of the days were like this. They were kind of drizzly gray, rainy days. I know that as a Californian, I really struggled with that, but he captured it. It's like those days where it is raining, it's drizzling, but the clouds are thin and you know the sun is behind it, so the whole sky is tinted in this yellowish color. And he really is a master because if you look at the cobblestones, which take up a vast portion of the painting, you can see the light reflecting in the water that's pooling on the cobblestones. It's really beautiful how he does this. So the spacing in this painting is interesting. Who are the subjects? The main couple is not in the middle. The lamppost is actually in the middle, dividing the painting right down the center. And if you look spatially, the painting is really divided into four parts. The lamppost divides it in the center, and then there's the portion where the buildings come in, and then the cobblestones down below. The man on the right is actually cut in half in the frame, which is an interesting choice. I love it. It gives it a dynamic aspect to the painting, as if you're walking. It's like a photograph, which uh, Kaibot was a big fan of photography. There are handfuls of characters in the background that are not too discernible. I like to think the main subject of this video is the remarkable building and the beautiful architecture behind it. While this does have the feel of a more serious painting, Kaibot does add a bit of playfulness. So my favorite part about the painting are the two legs sticking out of the umbrella right to the left of center. I think that that is so funny, especially when you zoom in. Also, there is a man who does not have an umbrella and he's uh, lightly skipping across the street. That adds a bit of playfulness to the shot. This is not an upbeat portrait. It has an urban jungle feel to it. The characters seem a little rushed or in their own world, a little bit isolated, perhaps because they want to escape the rain. An interesting fact is that the ground floor of the building between the Rue de Moscow and the Rue Clapeurion show a pharmacy sign in the painting, and it still houses a pharmacy today. So I love paintings like this that are a slice of life and we get to look and see what Paris was like in 1877. I love the cobblestones. I love how people dress. I love the umbrellas. I love thinking about what they're thinking about. I think many of these people are on their way to work or perhaps on their way to visit somebody. It's just such a masterpiece. The way he captures the lines of the building and the cobblestones, it's, it's truly perfection. Gustav Kaibot was a very talented artist and I hope that you enjoyed Paris Street Rainy Day and I would love to hear your thoughts on it down below. And now for the Poetry Corner, I've selected three poems about winter and let's enjoy those now. The first is Winter Trees by William Carlos Williams. All the complicated details of the attiring and the disattiring are completed. A liquid moon moves gently among the long branches. Thus, having prepared their buds against a shore winter, the wise trees stand sleeping in the cold. This one is Winter Solstice Chant by Annie Finch. Vines, leaves, roots of darkness growing, now you are uncurled and cover our eyes with the edge of winter's sky, leaning over us in icy stars. 
vines, leaves, roots of darkness growing. Come with your seasons, your fullness, your end. And the last one is not necessarily about the season of winter, but it's Sonnet 97 by William Shakespeare, and he's comparing his absence to the winter. How like a winter hath my absence been from thee, the pleasure of the fleeting year? What freezings have I felt, what dark days seen, what old December's bareness everywhere? And yet this time removed was summer's time, the teeming autumn, big with rich increase, bearing the wanton burthen of the prime, like widowed wombs after their lord's decease. Yet this abundant issue seemed to me but hope of orphans and unfathered fruit, for summer and his pleasures wait on thee, and thou away, the very birds are mute. Or if they sing, tis with so dull a cheer that leaves look pale, dreading the winter's near. I love in the first two lines, how like a winter hath my absence been from thee, the pleasure of the fleeting year. So he's comparing her, presumably her, to the pleasure of uh, the year and that his absence was like a barren winter. It's so beautiful. I like to also put out there one mindful thing that we can do this month together. And this month we're going to find pleasure in our evening routine. So winter can be difficult in that it gets dark very early and you're cold and you might not have um, the pleasure of summer of being out later or opening the windows and feeling the warm air coming through. So it's important that during the winter we do take pleasure in our evening routine, even though it is different and it looks different than other parts of the year. I am going to have a video about this on Monday, so make sure you check that out. And now I'm going to share the elegant connoisseurs with you. Tuscany Writing Retreat with Alan Watt from the LA Writers Lab with a special $600 off for the Daily Connoisseur audience. Jenny Williams from Carrot Top Paper Shop. Elaine Brisebois, Certified Nutritionist and Women's Weight Loss Coach. Emily McNeil, Fine Art. Ashley Buffa, Freedom Moms Smart Kids Chore System. Guy Blaise, author of Love Like the French, A Guide to Better Romance and Relationships. Carrie Van Hooser, author of Tis the Season for Poetry. Artist Kelly Cruz at kellycruzcreative.com. Macondo Forever, Woven Placemats. Mrs. Shockley from A Home for Elegance. Teresa Maples from Self Care Routine Cards. Ellen Scottish Shortbread. Stern Brothers Custom Design and Fine Jewelry. The Apron Diva by Denise Jordan with Pretty and Practical Aprons. And thank you to the following. Catherine Ray, Adelaide Beer, Anne-Marie Ramsey, Catherine Higginbotham, Darby Zweifel, Jenny Candelaria, Jet Rally Heron, Gina K. Henry, Julie Coleman, Juliette keeler Lebain, Karen Lynn Interior Design, Linda Eckloff, Living in Loveliness with Carly Tom, Maria Condor, Marie Caudill, Micah Higginbotham, Moonshadow Welsh Ponies, and Sean Ricci. Thank you so much to the Chic Society. If you're interested in joining again, you can click the join button down below, or I will leave a link in the description box. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Seek Out the Arts. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. In the meantime, keep calm and remain classy, and I will see you in my next video. Goodbye.